So Clemson's a hot team. They just annihilated a decent South Carolina team. They seem to be running on all cylinders based on Clemson's ability, based on the way they play. And we'll start with your defense, uh, trying to face a, a running back tandem that's, that's probably more talented and faster than any tandem that's been faced this year. Uh, certainly better than Notre Dame and Virginia Tech when you talk Tavian Feaster and Travis Travis Etienne. Uh, your your thoughts about starting with the defense facing this Clemson offense led by Kelly Bryant? I mean, the defense has to bring it. That's plain and simple. Uh, you know, Miami does have one of the best defensive lines in America, and they're going to have to show it. Uh, Clemson's left tackle, Mitch Hyatt, won the Jacobs Trophy for the ACC's best blocker, best offensive lineman. So obviously it's going to be a tall task for Chad Thomas or Joe Jackson or John Garvin or Trent Harris or whoever's lined up over him. Um, and then everybody in that on the defense, but especially in that front seven, is going to have to really be gap sound because, yeah, you know, uh, Travis Etienne is fast. I mean, he's a true freshman, but, boy, that kid can move. Like, Tavian Feaster also is a five-star running back. Like, he's nothing to sneeze at, you know. And then also Kelly Bryant in the QB run game, uh, same as they did with Deshaun Watson. They're calling his number to run the ball. Like, you know, QB power, like we're pulling a guard and you're running right behind him as a quarterback. So, um, yeah, I mean, that trio, and I'm sure that, you know, obviously they can do jet sweep with Deion Kane and Ray Ray McLeod has played. He was a high school running back and then he plays receiver now, so he can obviously do that kind of thing as well. Um, you know, they, they have a lot of skill position players, but it's really just going to have to start up front. You know, and obviously, you know, Notre Dame came in with a vaunted running game and Miami was able to bring it and shut them down. And obviously, I don't think that Notre Dame and Clemson run a very, uh, like an identical scheme. And I think that there are some things that are similar, but also disparate, uh, other things that are disparate, I should say. But either way, Miami's going to have to find a way to slow them down. Um, and that's really just going to have to get buy-in from up front. You're going to have to play with that effort, be gap sound. And, you know, make plays when you have an opportunity to make plays. You cannot be missing guys in the backfield when you have a chance for a tackle for loss, at which Miami is arguably the best team in America. you got to get those guys on the ground. You can't you know, just – that's really what it's going to come down to. The front seven is going to have to play one of their best games. It's going to have to be a Notre Dame-style game. Um, and, you know, I, I'm interested to see if they can do that. I know we have the talent to do it. Um, and hopefully, again, we have the motivation after last week to really prove ourselves uh, to be that kind of a team. But, yeah, uh, there's going to be a clash of titans right there with their run game versus Miami's run defense. And, Cam, I know you're aware of this uh, kid, Hunter Renfro, and I hate to stereotype him as, oh, he's he's the, the little guy that could, the walk-on type, the little slot receiver. Boy, isn't he cute. But, man, that guy can ball it up. And in addition to what he does out of the slot, uh, I'm watching the game against South Carolina last weekend, and he just makes one of those, like, coach's kid, knows what he's doing kind of plays where they're punting to him, South Carolina is, and he completely dupes the coverage. He plays as, wit as though he's going for the football. The football's behind him. And it's on the other side of the field. He's acting on the other side of the field like he's fielding the punt. Therefore, the South Carolina coverage is drawn to him. Therefore, they're not stopping the kick that was almost perfectly placed inside the five, and it's going into the end zone. And he's just making plays like that. He caught a ball on the side in the slot and juked out like five guys. He actually had a face mask against him, and that didn't bring him down. And he runs for a touchdown, and... He caught the game-winning touchdown in the national championship game last year and two against Alabama the year before. So he's just uh, another one of the threats with 50 catches and three touchdowns as well. 